Hello everyone, welcome to Karnataka exams. This is uh, part one of science and technology of KS series itself. We'll do some parts of science and technology. In this uh, first part, we'll see three topics that is nuclear plants in India, and, uh, type of the sources, what is nuclear fission, what is nuclear fusion, from where we get fuels and all. And uh, second one is uh, we'll see the types of energy, the important ones. And the third topic would be Newton's laws on motion, the three laws of Newton on motion. We'll see about that. Let's start with nuclear power in India. Nuclear power is fourth largest source of electricity in India. First is thermal, that is coal. Second is hydroelectric. Third is renewable. And fourth is nuclear. Totally, India has eight nuclear power plants. Eight nuclear power plants has 22 reactors. Totally, eight power plants with 22 reactors and what is the capacity that is 6780 this will be easy to remember 6780 is the installed capacity and whatever you see in red are the ones which are active whatever in blue are the ones which are planned so Narora this is Rajasthan Kakrapur Tarapur Baba Atomic Kaiga in Karnataka in Chennai and one more in Tamil Nadu itself Kudankulam these are the ones which are active now and uh, these ones uh, like Jaitpur, Baswara and all the things you see in blue are the ones which are planned so totally 8 power plants which are active and 8 power plants has 22 reactors in total next is we'll see what is the difference between nuclear fission and nuclear fusion to understand this we need to understand what is binding energy binding energy is very important concept atoms are held together with energy that energy with which the atoms are held together is called as binding energy more binding energy more the atoms are stable so binding energy if it is more then the atoms are more stable vice versa so atoms try to increase their binding energy all the atoms always try to increase their binding energy iron and nickel iron and nickel are the most stable atoms so this is taken as reference iron and nickel are most stable atoms if the atom is lighter than iron or nickel if the atom is lighter than iron or nickel it should be fused to get energy if the atom is heavier than iron or nickel then it has to be split to get energy so splitting is called fission and fusion is fusion right if uh, iron and nickel are taken as base because these are the most stable atoms if some atom is lighter than iron or nickel then we need to fuse it fuse them together to get energy that is nuclear fusion if they are heavier than iron or nickel then we have to split it to get energy okay we'll see the differences now so what is nuclear fission fission as i said is splitting into two or more atoms and nuclear fusion is fusing together that is coming together of two or more atoms coming together is nuclear fusion nuclear fission less energy takes to split nuclear fusion takes more energy to fuse as it takes more energy the energy which is got after fusion is also more that is in comparison with nuclear fission nuclear fusion has four to five times higher energy we get higher energy by nuclear fusion nuclear fission doesn't naturally occur but nuclear fusion you can see the reaction which is going on in the sun is nuclear fusion so what is the reaction which is going on presently in the sun it is nuclear fusion where is nuclear fission used it is used in nuclear power plants so just now we saw the basics of nuclear power plants right there in nuclear power plants we use nuclear fission nuclear fission fusion is not yet used this is in experimental stage at nuclear fission fusion is not yet used in nuclear power plants we use nuclear fission it is used in atomic bomb or atom bombs nuclear fusion is used in 
hydrogen bomb and what is the fuel which we use in nuclear fission that is uranium the fuel which we use in nuclear fusion is deuterium or tritium the fuel to nuclear reactors is uranium india has really less amount of uranium so what we do we import it from other countries so we have two deals one is bilateral civil nuclear deals and one is uranium supply agreements the agreement is with russia mongolia kazakhstan these are together only right in asia so you can remember it as russia mongolia kazakhstan we have agreements to give uranium to us and argentina in south america and namibia this is in africa argentina and namibia all right we have nuclear sorry uranium supply agreements wherein we have nuclear deals deals is with france us uk canada and south korea recently there was a uh, there were two sites which were discovered in bhima belt bhima basin where there is uranium reserves one is tumam palle belt this is in andhra pradesh and bhima basin at gogi this is in karnataka we have uranium in this and this is amongst top 20 amongst the top 20 reserves in the whole world so there is nuclear deals and there is supply agreements agreements is with russia mongolia kazakhstan argentina namibia and nuclear deals is with france us uk canada and south korea so what is the difference between a deal and an agreement agreement is done either orally or written and this is enforceable in court of law this is a legal document a deal is not enforceable in court of law and agreement is always binding they are bound to give the uranium supply that is how it will be written or it it will be orally said if they don't abide by that agreement then we can go to court of law okay this is uh, that is not the case with nuclear deals so that is the fundamental difference next one is we'll read about nuclear protests in india there was a nuclear disaster in japan that is fukushima disaster this was a result of earthquake and tsunami in 2011 so what happens is there will be generator to control the reactions in the nuclear reactor if the reactor was cooled it would have not caused a disaster in fukushima but the quake and tsunami disabled the generator the generator was disabled and due to insufficient cooling three nuclear reactors melted down exploded and released radioactive materials that was about fukushima disaster in japan what happened after this disaster is uh, very important that is after this incident there was large scale protests in maharashtra's jaitpur nuclear power plant this is supported by france and kudankulam nuclear power plant this is in tamil nadu which is supported by russia russia has their reactors in kudankulam okay after this uh, 2011 incident germany has shut down eight out of its 17 reactors and germany also said that by 2022 it will stop using nuclear plants it will stop using nuclear plants for uh, power generation not not alone germany but also switzerland and spain they have also planned construction of new reactors so globally more plants have been closed than started recently and also one more in india that is west bengal they refused to give permission to proposed 6000 megawatt project where in haripur in west bengal next we'll read some basic energies first to first is kinetic energy and potential energy these both are related to understand this see if you take a bicycle if it is on the top this has potential to do work if it goes down then it has some potential to do work okay when it is coming up it is kinetic energy even that time a potential energy will be there that is if it stops somewhere it will go down that is its potential 
so stored energy is potential so if the pi cycle is here it is stored that means if it goes like this then it will do some work or if it goes like this then it will do some work that is it has potential to do work that is potential energy that is stored energy is potential energy for example if this is the dam and this is the back water so energy stored here the water is having potential energy that is if it comes like this then it will do some work okay and this is energy related to objects motion so when it is doing work something in motion that is kinetic energy that is they have capability to change if it goes like this then there is change that it is changing the place from here to here or if there is some object it is hitting that or something like that that is it has capability to change that is kinetic energy so potential energy is stored energy and objects motion is kinetic energy next one is mechanical energy this is important because it has both kinetic and potential energy kinetic and potential energy together forms mechanical energy so mechanical energy is a result of moment or location of an object so we'll see for an example the hammer is here when it is here it is having potential energy because it is at rest here so when it moves it has kinetic energy when it moves and hits the nail it is mechanical energy that is it is the result of moment the nail was here it went inside that is the result of moment when the hammer was here it is potential energy because the energy is stored here if it moves like this then it is kinetic energy so mechanical energy is kinetic energy plus potential energy we can see one more example that is car moving on a mountain if you take this as mountain and this as a car car moving on a mountain has kinetic energy if it stops somewhere and if the brakes are not applied then it will move back that is when it is at rest like this that is potential energy when it is in motion it is kinetic energy so both together will form mechanical energy next one is thermal energy what is thermal thermal means temperature the temperature difference between two systems is thermal energy that's all for example if you take coffee cup it is placed in this environment so what happens is the coffee cup and the coffee in it is hotter than the surrounding environment that is there is difference in temperature between two environments or two systems that is thermal energy next one is gravitational energy so atmosphere around the earth is gravitational energy the moon which is surrounding the earth that is also done by gravitational energy that is attraction between two objects depending upon their mass is gravitational energy so last topic for today is newton's laws of motion there are three laws on motion which was given by newtons so we'll see the first law first law of motion what the first law says it says body will remain at rest or in motion rest or in motion unless it is acted by external force what this says is things cannot stop by themselves or start by themselves it's done by some other force to cause the change that is first law of motion second law of motion f is equal to ma force is equal to mass into acceleration or mass times acceleration force acting on a body is equal to mass times acceleration times means multiplication mass times its acceleration this means if something is at rest for example a tennis ball is kept here it will be at rest then you hit it with a bat you take a bat and hit it moves in the direction of the force you have hit the ball with if you have hit in this direction it will move in this direction if you hit it in this direction then it will move in this direction that is the force acting on the body is equal to the mass times its acceleration the third law of motion this is very famous right for every action there is equal and opposite reaction that is force occurs in pairs if one body pushes the another the other one pushes just back to the first body as hard right 
so this was a uh, first part of science and technology we'll do some other parts also on the important topics we'll do which will be important for our kas both prelims and mains but uh, this video was meant for prelims so that's all for today i'll see you people in the next video thank you please like and subscribe